six, five, four, 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 three, two, one. Daryl and Jesse are on to their third project for the year, and it's a beauty, a Panzer 1B, and it's going to be a runner. The boys made a start on this vehicle in 2019, but the project was put on hold until we could obtain some more parts. Unfortunately, the pandemic and the recent conflict in Ukraine have meant that we're going to have to proceed with what we have. Luckily, we have quite a bit. The hull and fighting compartment is made of a mix of mostly original and newly fabricated parts, but the rear deck and turret are 100% original. It's been many years since the boys have worked on this, so it might take a little bit of time to reacquaint themselves with it. Either that or it exploded from rust. Oh, no. What have you got two hinges on yours? Yeah, we must be missing it. Unless it's in here somewhere. I would say the nuts have rusted off and it's full on yeah. Well, as you can see here, we've got the main body and, and uh, shell and, and the rear engine deck of a Panzer One. And that's our next project. When we start building a tank, because here in Australia we don't actually have access to any vehicles like this, we source all the information we can and a lot of time getting a good scale model is extremely handy because it gives us an idea on how it all goes together. The lower hull is made up of uh, new steel and a mixture of old parts that we've managed to source. The same with the fighting compartment. But our whole engine deck is entirely original. The turret's original too. It still shows the German Panzer Grey on it. This is actually going to be a runner. Won't be, won't have an original drive line or anything like that, but it's just going to have it so it can be on display and people actually see it driving around. We're, we're going to try and model the suspension off original, right, because we've, we've got some leaf springs and that that we can copy. The engine and the, and the drive line will be whatever we can make work in the limited area we've got. It'll probably just be a little car engine and uh, we are toying with the idea of having the final drives run on hydraulics, just, just because of the small amount of room we've got. What we had to do is start with the hull. So we sourced all the pieces, put them all together, worked out if they were bent or anything, straightened them all out, and then started with the hull on the floor, put the sides up, the front and the back on, put the floor on last, uh, fully welded it once it was all together, and then we flipped it over. Yeah, we had some plans and schematics. And it was good because all the projects that we've done previous up to this were all like quite heavy and this is just like you can almost pick everything up by hand and just throw it on 12 mil hull size 12 mil wow and it's it's not very heavy yeah nothing not very to heavy it these. i don't think it would have taken you know much punishment the no. one. i think it was just a quick little nimble nimble vehicle when we had the hull uh before we stood it up to keep it all structurally sound so we can flip it and work on it and when we were welding it up we just put internal uh braces so we've just braced it from the top and put some braces going down to the flooring on the sides just to stop it from warping and contorting and moving. Yep. So, so will they come out? So the, these oh. ones will, but this is the firewall um, partition in the middle. So that actually stays in. So we've just bolted that in there now. That, that should stay there for the whole build. The angle lines that hold it on are riveted. Is the superstructure riveted? I don't think it is. That was just bolted. So yeah, so just the angle line on the hull was riveted, hot riveted on, and then the superstructure just bolts on so they obviously can take it off. The next part will be doing the running gear. The majority of the running gear we're gonna have to do in-house. It's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because like I said, we don't really have plans or schematics or anything like that. We've, we've got a few things that we can copy, which is lucky. We've got one original swing arm that we can copy. So that's gonna be really handy. We've also got one final drive sprocket and I think we've got one rear idler, I think. Look, we actually, we've actually forgotten, like me and Daryl were saying before, we've forgotten all about this because we did this all three years ago. <laughs> have to do some more study on the Panzer ones for sure. We'll go for a walk over here and have a look at the basket of goodies that we've got and, uh, and uh, I'll be able to show you some things. Remember we made them up too and they got rusty. Oh God. Can you drag that out while I hold that up or not? Yep, it's heavy. In here is 
most of the running gear. There's a, an old mudguard flap. A lot of the, the early German tanks, all the mudguards are made of aluminium. Once the war started, aluminium was wanted for aircraft production and other things, so everything went to metal then. But we've got wheels, uh, return rollers. There's a bit of a mixture of stuff in here. There's some of the this engine hatch, uh, inspection hatches and that we've just had made out of new steel. If just gets one of them out, they're a uh, support for the final drives at the front just to make it a bit stronger. Oh, did you guys have to make that one? Yeah, so yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah. This, was, uh, this was laser cutting by a local uh, steel provider. So here's, here's a nice original vision port. On the inside you can see, still see the primer and then Panzer Grey. Early pans of grey. That grey is the original. That's the original paint, yeah. And then on the outside, you've got like a dunkel gelb. Once the, the pans of twos, pans of threes, and pans of fours come in line, you know, these are just relegated to training vehicles and things like that. So these are the return rollers. Yeah. So we've got we've got a few of the original return roller mounts or housings, and then these are the original rubbers. Original rubber. Yep. They were new old stock or? Oh, I don't think so. I don't really? Think so. I think they're just in really good condition. Really good condition. That one over there is the one to show. I'm not too sure it's got made in Germany in it, so unless it's pre-war, but that says continental. They would have made these in the 30s. Yeah. These yeah. are the rear, rear rear housing housings, which we made. So that one's haven't finished them. There shouldn't be two, should there? We haven't finished any of these parts off. We kind of like, we got to a stage with the Panzer 1 and we knew that we were waiting on more parts to come. So we just put a few things together so we didn't have a million things on pallets laying everywhere and just tacked them. Yeah. So now we can actually go and actually fit everything and work it all out, make sure it all works and then weld it up, finish it off. Oh, Different variant. Yeah. So that, because of the angle of that, that vision slot, we know it goes on the side somewhere. And I think there's a variant that has the taller superstructure. It was like a command vehicle. So we believe that's off that. This is stuff, once again, this is stuff we haven't seen for a couple of years. That's, oh, there's our uh, turret hatch there under there. This was one of the pieces we had made from a supplier overseas. We were hoping for more parts like this, but as mentioned earlier, we're making the call to press on with the project ourselves. Oh, that all locks in, all works. Yeah, so we didn't fabricate that one, but that will definitely be going in our fans of one. No, 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 that's the flap to climb in. That's the original cross. That's why we're careful with it. And that other one comes across and goes over. It goes on the, that's the main one to climb in. Oh, so you repaired this one? Yeah, we yeah, so repaired this, it. this yeah. one was ripped in half and then also the, the side was torn off. Wow. We've, had to add, we've had to add a piece in here. Yeah, but it's got the but original cross it. still has the original Vulcan on on cross. Yeah. yeah, that's right. When, when, when I welded this, I remember you were on the side with a, with a wet cloth. Remember yeah. a damp cloth? Yeah. Oh. Trying to cool it down. Yeah. So, so the paint didn't burn away. Yeah, the yeah. paint didn't burn away. Wow. So we'll try, we'll pr probably try a clear coat this one. Yeah, yeah. Just well, yeah, yeah. Try and, try and save it. Yeah, oh, don't they, hin they hinge into each other, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, one goes over like that. Yeah, they overlap. Oh, it's a two-stage yeah. sort of yeah. door thing. So this pulls down and that one pulls around the other way. So they, they hinge into each other. So that would go oh. here. Right here. Oh, that's going to be great, especially with the original cross on it. Wow. Yeah. Do we have track for this, Daryl? I believe so, yeah, because we're going to make a runner, so we've got track. Yeah, like original track? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So just to show you, this a little bit different about the Panzer 1. It was only one sprocket ring per side. So it must run inside like that. Are you going to actually it? do leaf spring units? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. do leaf spring units. Have you made them before? No, uh, no. We've had a little bit of experience working with the Panzer IV ones, but we haven't made any in-house. No. Oh, well, we've made up a prototype for the Panzer One, but once again, we haven't seen it for three years, so we need to go back over and think about how we're going to do it. To kick off the build, Jesse starts by disassembling the road wheels. These are original Panzer One um, road wheels. Yeah. Just by looking at this one here, the rubber is split though. You can see along here, when I pull it up and down, 
This would be real rubber too. Yeah, yeah. So that's a bit of a drama, that split. So we're hoping that this is the only one that's got the split in them. I haven't had a really good look yet. So would you have this one as the spare, maybe? This will be the spare. Yeah. They're a lot smaller and a lot lighter than what we're used to working on, which is good. These are actually cast aluminium. These. Wait, that, really? Yeah, these are cast aluminium. Um, I've made a bit of a tool up to make the job a little bit easier. I've just cut some flat bits, worked out where they need to go on the nut, and then welded them onto this. So this locates on top of the nut. It's fitted. See, it's got this original shaft in it that's been oxy cut off. What's the ring do? I'm not sure, I just might take that out. That might be... Oh, it's like a handle to carry it. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should put a little bit of heat on it. See these? Mm. Yeah. Someone's laid into it with like a chisel, a cold chisel or something, or a punch. Trying to pull it apart. So my guess is that it's locked together pretty good. So we'll try this again one more time. A little bit more lube. If not, then we might put some heat on it. You know what the painful thing is? What? That first one just spun straight, straight off. off. Like straight you off. You save this one for the for some good content. Like that so they, that would have been like a seal. Mm. A rubber seal in there. So that one doesn't have a cap? No, no. So but this one here just spun straight out. Mm. Super duper easy. This one here looks like someone's really tried to lay into it and get it, it looks like it's really stuck. Maybe it's smashed. So it, yeah. we might, it might be smashed, I'm not sure. Um, we're gonna try a little bit of heat now. Okay. So we'll put a little bit of heat on and we'll quench it, shock it, and see if that just loosens it, opens it up, and then we'll chuck the tool back on and see if we can spin it off. See that, if that's just, if that's a crack, could be a big spring wash, like it's like acting like a yeah. spring wash in there. Yeah, we've got to get it out though. Yeah, I know, well. I'm worried, I'm going to get it out, so. Alright. Just go reverse, you reckon? Yep. Yeah, 
you go. No, I don't think it's cross threaded. It it grabs for so long and then it stops. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, it's really threaded to there. Yeah. That crack was causing a lot of problems. Hopefully, the other road wheels are in better condition. We did it! Yes. <laughs> Thank God. In there. I'll take it outside and degrees it all. I'll just have a look at what it looks like. It looks perfect. A waffle stamp. There's more. There's more. Oh no. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be on. Um... We might be lucky. Yeah, so that's just a cap. Ah, oh, there you go. There is another ring. There you go. Another one of them. This should be able to loosen, loosen up easily. You just knock around? Yeah. Spacer. Yep. It's got a little recess. Now I don't know, I think this is like a, a brass or a copper washer. No shaft. Will you need to press it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking that we might do. I'm just hoping that. Mm. I'm hoping it's not locked somehow on that, just so we don't cause any damage, further damage, sorry. Further damage, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty damaged already. I'll put this on, we should have spin it off. Yeah, I'm glad I made that key. How big is this thing? Oh, out he comes. There you go. I don't know how it's attached though. I'm just going to go over here. Yeah. Just think, the last time this was opened was nearly 90 years ago when it was first assembled. Like the day that they put it all together in the factory. Usable. We won't use the bearings though. Won't we? I don't think so. I think you'd get new ones. Although they do look pretty damn good. So I'm knocking the inner bearing out. Yeah. So just knocking it through. Needs to you know, lift it up a bit more. Ugh. I do have a bit of a, I do have a bit of a rattle to them, but just needs a bit probably, of grease. They'd probably be okay. Look at that, Switzerland. See what Ryan and Steve reckon. But Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, wow. Fabric Swiss. It's got a cast part number on there. Yeah, it's cast. Give us a look. You can see it's see the casting line. Yeah. This has been cast and then machined. The top 
top's been machined to make sure it's the right size. They've also machined in here too. And then the rest of it's all cast. Gosh. We pulled a few pens of four uh, wheels apart and we were finding these cast steel ones. And then there was fabricated ones and then there was also timber ones. Oh, that's right, I was picking up. That sounds nice. Oh, a bit grimy. A little bit grimy. But yeah, so that would go on like that. And that one. Like that. It goes actually in there. Oh, it'd be a matter of lining it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. essentially how it goes together. So that's it. Oh. <laughs> there, you go. there we go. That's we nice. only have one front drive sprocket, but Daryl has a plan for a replacement. We've got a sprocket on a hub here that makes the final drive for the Panzer 1. We're going to get the new hub made and a new sprocket. If you can see here, it's two pieces. See how wide it is there? And over here, so it's got a recess machined in it. Okay. So they're going to have to make it out of a 25mm piece and then put on a big lathe and machine a recess in it. And then this piece we're going to do out of a, a thick 50mm piece. I'm just going to cut off all these bolts with the oxy and then separate it. That's the reason why we're not trying to undo them. They've got split pins in them. Yeah. So we'll just cut them off. Please give generously to the blind. Drop it on the ground and hope it'll, it'll bounce its way out. Starting to pop out? Yeah. Probably the first time it's been apart in 90 odd years. Because wow. we, we don't have it, uh, our manufacturing industry in cans wouldn't be able to press that or do a one off job just like that. Yeah. So. Call me old fashioned, but I always look for markings. I'd love to find old markings on things. Even though a lot of work has already been done on this project, making this Panzer 1 a runner and as complete as we can will have a lot of challenges. But you can follow along right here on Oz Armour. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one.